don't look at box prices, look at capacity and coverage. How many nodes does it take you to cover a given area? Here's another network where it's just, uh, we're in the middle of deployment here. The initial concept was 40 nodes. We're actually up to 150. Uh, the rest of the nodes will be about 360 or 400 nodes by the time we're done. Um, this will be finished by the end of, I would say, the end of October. So this is probably the largest 802.11 in network outdoor to date. Um, and the original application for this was a smart grid application. Festival Hydro is a um, utility company that's providing all eight, 18,000 meters and the information back to the network. Um, so that they can use it for the board's requirements. So this is pretty significant. Uh, deployment's going great. Um, we watch this account. We actually backhole this with our GPON, our um, ASX 800, which is our optical fiber backhaul. So this is a significant uh, reference design and a significant win. There's a bunch of competitors that went after this, and Motorola won that. Here's a little bit about Scientel. Scientel is one of our mesh bars out there. They're doing a, a Texas Police Department, and they're actually doing video upload. So the police cars come into the parking lot, and they're doing a video upload. And they're using the 7181s uh, on the top of the roof. I think they had two or three on there. They had four originally, but it was an overkill. They were just doing some testing. They're actually going to do a citywide deployment of this. Here's a large city in Canada that we're working on. Uh, this was a small deployment. Bell, Canada, with the VAR on here. There's an eight-node deployment. And they're actually started out with video surveillance for the park. But turns out that they're actually going to blanket the city and use this as a multi-use network to offer Wi-Fi to its citizens and other applications. Savannah River, or the DOE, here's a um, good example of all the mesh products that are in there and all the outdoor and actually the indoor. They actually um, put a whole uh, network together. We basically blanketed there. Uh, facilities and previously they had no way of getting power or anything out there but because of our meshing algorithms were made for real time in milliseconds will converge on routes they've actually deployed three or four nodes they actually deployed three nodes and they just purchased another 20 so this is another case of a multi-use network so they've actually deployed a public access point with 245x and this is a non-classified facility They'll be doing some classified stuff, which we have the FIPS upgrade on the roadmap. Uh, police Department in Tennessee, this is actually um, going to be also a multi-use network. This is a, a bit of the vehicles have vehicle-mounted modems in, in the police cars, and we're using point-to-multi, point-to-point also. They're covering a pretty large area. It's the, the police department wants a state-of-the-art network, and they're also going to use this for a multi-use network for other municipality uh, components. This is an interesting use case. Um, so our uh, VAR, Stark, actually does a lot of uh, applications with RFIDs. What they actually did, you see that red dot on the left there? They actually just deployed 17181 and it lit up their whole concrete yard. And it actually penetrated, if you look to the right, that's their building, it actually penetrated their whole warehouse. So they actually lit this whole warehouse up, indoor and outdoor, with 17181. And if you look there on their truck, they actually put a 5181, which is our outdoor BG node on the enterprise side. They attached it to the truck. And when they move around, they actually have this in spanning tree mode uh, because the data rate is not very significant. And they have this access point on the truck talking to the 7181. And they can actually uh, use our 9090G uh, mobile computers to track all the concrete pieces in the yard. They're actually replicating this throughout their yard. So that just a couple of few pieces of equipment, and they solved a very large problem. Their biggest problem out in the yard is they, they had no electricity or anything. So that's where, if you look all the way to the right, you'll see the AP71 sitting on top of that building there. That was the only place that they can have power. And it actually lit up the whole yard. So uh, very successful application. I call this an... Uh, Enterprise application. Ah, ferry transit. This is an interesting application. So we basically put a bunch of meshed 7181s on the port. And on the ferry, we have a bunch of 71. There's one 7181 on each ferry. And the ferry takes the data that's on the ferry uh, into a, there's a video server with six cameras on each of the ferries. And they're streaming that live back to the 7181. 
they had an issue of security. They got 3,000 commuters a day traveling on those ferries. Since our meshing algorithms are done in real time, we're sending that data off of each one of those ferries in real time back to the NOx. So this is an interesting, I call this a public transit application. Airport USA, very interesting application. So basically we have a customer that has 15 million packages a day and 6.1 million customers and they have to use the state-of-the-art real-time uh, wireless networks. We've actually deployed, I think it was three 7181s on the tarmac at this airport. And, what, and this worked very well and we integrated it to the rest of our, uh, what we call our indoor network. We're at, we actually have air defense and um, our indoor APs in there also. This was very successful. You see all the way to the right, you'll see that one AP71 up there across the wall. So airport application, pretty significant on the tarmac because of the interference. Special event. Okay. So this particular customer had no cellular coverage for the event. It was uh, way up in the, uh, I'd say it was in their uh, mountain somewhere where they had no uh, cell coverage. So they really needed the applications and the mesh network up there for event operations uh, so that they can solve different facility problems when they have concerts of this size. So the outdoor coverage for the event, they, I think they had, it was actually two in the middle. You'll see one there on the left there and another one on the right. They actually blanketed the whole um, music venue. And they also had a few outdoors because they were streaming live video um, for surveillance and security. So, and they actually used this for uh, selling large crowds with smartphones too. They opened up a couple of SSIDs on their garden wall so that they can actually handle all the customers. So those are just some use cases. I have, I have a whole other deck that just dives into a bunch of them. But I selected the ones that I thought were, you know, gave us a broad market share. A little bit about the 7181 from a product standpoint. It's an 802.11n uh, ABGN 24.5x. The 5x is we do DFS in Europe. 300 megabits per second in every band. They're both one watt radios, so we do a very significant job on coverage. Um, and it's probably the highest performing radio out there on the market. The ADEPT integrated panels. We took a lot of research on our panels. Each one of those panels we call um, advanced element panel technology. We have a bunch of patents on that. We're doing uh, a concept called dual polarization diversity so that we can pay attention to what happens outdoors with interference. Outdoors you see a lot more interference than you do indoors. So we paid special attention to the uh, panel technology or the RF system, but most significantly to get to that second data stream outdoors. You really had to do something to your RF system. Otherwise, you'd be sitting at that single data stream where your max throughput uh, data rate would be 154. So the beautiful design and no porcupines, we call it, basically had to do with aesthetics. We've got a bunch of, I don't want this radio with six antennas sticking outdoors next to power lines. So we've got a lot of what we call voice of the customer, feedback from our customers. I mentioned earlier about the mobility. We have Mesh Connects. It's a mobility engine. That's our... Uh, I call it our patent portfolio. It's a lot of Motorola added value over the years. 125 patents in that area for the ability to do mobile meshing. And um, I can tell you that as far as those um, algorithms were proven in helicopters and planes because of being able to put access points and Wi-Fi access points on planes and being able to handle that type of mobility. One point wireless suite is our management tool. We're a decentralized management system, so we're basically using one point. Mostly use that for field upgrades and managing the nodes. Um, one point I would use if you have more than five or ten nodes. You really don't need one point. If you have one or two nodes, you can actually manage it from the field. When I say seamless indoor-outdoor, I could put a switch in the middle, or I can leave the switch out, and I could do mesh connects on my indoor nodes, um, um, STP mesh, or what I call spanning tree mesh, and on my outdoor nodes, I can do mesh connects with the root node being in both. So we have a, a seamless indoor-outdoor uh, coverage. We have a bunch of accounts that are actually doing that deployment. So a little bit about the radio technology. Like I said, there's two, a dual radio in there. The, uh, the Radio 1 is a BGN, 2-4. It's a 3 by 3 by 2 and our uh, max ERP is 36. So you could do 20 and 40 megahertz channels. Like I said before, you'll see 20 in uh, 
places that have a lot of two four interference, you'll see